Newton, Chambers & Co., was one of England's largest industrial companies. It was founded in 1789 by George Newton and Thomas Chambers. History George Newton and Thomas Chamber were partners in the Phoenix foundry at Snow Hill, Sheffield and along with Henry Longdon they signed a lease to extract coal and ironstone from the Thorncliffe Valley. The 21-year lease was signed in December 1793 and it gave them mining rights to the Thorncliffe Valley from the Earl Fitzwilliam and set up their works on the Thorncliffe site near Chapeltown, to the north of Sheffield. The company built the Thorncliffe Ironworks beside the Blackburn Brook above the wooded valley slopes where the mining was to be carried out. The first blast furnace was completed in April 1795 and the second in 1796. The first had a capacity of 15 tons of metal a week, while the second could produce 20 tons. The two furnaces were in operation for 78 years before being replaced in the 1870s. Around this time, for the first ten years of the partnership's existence, interest paid on capital was limited to 5% per annum and the working partners drew only modest salaries of £80 per annum. This policy was intended to encourage the growth of the business, and it certainly enabled it to survive some periods of poor trading, but by the early 19th century the practice of mostly leaving accrued profits within the business led to disputes with some sleeping partners. In 1815 the partners met with William Murdoch, the inventor of coal gas lighting, this being seen as providing a growth in work for their foundry. Coal, from the company's mines, was provided as charge for beehive coke ovens which were built on the site. By the end of the 19th century the company were not only mining coal and ironstone but building blast furnaces, coke ovens and chemical plant. Heavy section iron, cast in the foundry was used in two iconic structures, Tower Bridge, crossing the River Thames in London, and the Eddystone Lighthouse. During the 1890s, the company introduced its Isle disinfectant made from distilled coal tar. The name became well known for its use on a best-selling, medicated toilet paper, often found in schools and public lavatories, noted for its abrasive quality. According to the radio documentary Now Wash Your Hands, the reason for its ubiquity was because local authorities were given it as part of a bulk purchasing agreement when ordering disinfectant. World War II In 1939 the Thorncliffe Works came under the control of the Admiralty. A new workshop was constructed at Warren Lane, a short distance away from the Thorncliffe Works, which was used to build army vehicles and became the largest manufacturer of Churchill tanks for the war effort. One of the tanks used to stand at the side of the road near the factory until recently. William Joyce, Lord Ha Ha, in one of his radio broadcasts threatened to dot the I on the Isle name with a bomb. It was intended to destroy the source of the Churchill tanks. A near miss ensued, but the works remained intact. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Post-war The nationalization of the coal mining and steel industries in 1948 saw the group forced to sell off its interests in these fields. However the company remained heavily involved in iron and steel founding and the production of chemicals from tar distillates, the basis of many products manufactured by its ISIL subsidiary. The engineering part of the group designed and supplied all manner of process plant and equipment for the coal gas, chemical and steel industries. Topic diversification Before World War II they had started building excavators under license from the American manufacturer Coring and sold them under the NCK brand name. In 1958, the company acquired Ransoms and Rapier to become a major producer of excavators, draglines and other construction equipment. A new subsidiary company NCK Rapier was formed, with production moving to Ipswich. In 1960, the company acquired Ronoak Limited, a manufacturer of wax polishes and wood stains based in Portslade, Brighton and with it the Ronseal brand name. The group also set up Redfire as a marketing company for coal-burning grates which were made in its foundry. 
Changes, in particular the Clean Air Act saw the company move into light fabrications and oil-fired central heating equipment, however, the oil-fired boiler market collapsed in autumn 1973 with the increase in prices. In 1972 the group was taken over by industrial holding company Central and Sherwood. <laughs> 